if there are any good ideas, uh, they are due to these people who are there. Some of some are, are not anymore at at um, Isemat. Uh, I mean, it, this is a. I mean, partly reflecting what we were talking this morning. Some of them are economists. Some of them are mathematicians. Some of them are hackers. Some of them are uh, computer scientists. And uh, I, I will start uh, uh, talking a little bit on s the broad work that uh, we've been doing on uh, trying to apply the work that we did for um, physical security in the cyber world. Uh, but in line with what we mentioned, we discussed this morning, uh, I, I shall emphasize some issues in relation to artificial intelligence. The idea is that uh, AI ingredients are being incorporated into cyber, and actually, everywhere uh, and this is bringing in new uh, um, hacking opportunities uh, that uh, need to be considered um, and for which uh, there's uh, um, many things to be developed in my in my opinion I should be grateful also to for putting me the first in the in the afternoon because otherwise if I ha had I been the last one, Probably I would have nothing to say, so I, I will try to not uh, duplicate uh, what it was said this morning. Uh, but um, this is kind of a summary of, uh, of this morning, and nobody mentioned it. So that this is a cyber insurance ecosystem, uh, and uh, we are putting there the agents, uh, the actors in this in this uh, theater. Um, we put there the relations or some of the relations and probably each of these arrows um, or bunch of or blocks of arrows uh, introduce interesting risk models uh, and interesting decision problems. So personally, um, can, I, can I point the, yeah. So personally, I, I will move in this, uh, in this space, the relation between the insurer and the company but we'll, as we, we, as we mentioned, in, in this relation, there will be uh, the uh, insurance brokers will appear, but also the security providers, the vendors, uh, there will be the attackers, the experts, the, the scientists, et cetera, et cetera. So, but uh, mostly I will move in this, in this space. Okay, uh, many of these things uh, were already s uh, said, so, but I, I wish I shall mention, um, uh, the things that are of more interest to us in our research and applications, which is modeling intentionality. In this case, modeling intentionality in cybersecurity. And as Olivia mentioned, uh, we tend to apply something that we call adversarial risk analysis. And also the, the need of valuing properly information assets, reputation, etc. And this is essentially a multi-attribute problem. And something which was uh, very... Um, uh, very briefly mentioned in, in one of the comments in the dialogue, uh, which is the uh, very basic tools that are being used for cybersecurity. I mean, the, the basic, very basic standards that are uh, uh, used for cybersecurity risk analysis at the moment. So that gives opportunities to. The rest have been all perfectly covered this morning and very nicely and with more insights that, uh, that, that uh, the ones that I could give. And this will be re re uh, recurrent. Uh, uh, there's relatively little reference to emergent AI issues. So though there is a major field called now adversarial machine learning, which is uh, starting to appear uh, and which is getting uh, a lot of track. So just, um, it was very uh, uh, briefly mentioned, uh, but I would like to stress a, c a couple of ideas. Uh, I put there um, some of the frameworks for cybersecurity risk analysis. So uh, each country, we are we, we are all chauvinistic in cybersecurity. So each country has uh, its own standard. Uh, so you have in France EBIOS. Uh, we have in Spain Margarit. Margarit, for example, is promoted by the Ministry of Public Administration, and everyone who wants to do something or wants to certify or blah blah blah. blah needs to say that they have uh, Magri uh, they have uh, undertaken Magri there's ISOs etc but uh, um, yeah and there's also compliance frameworks we mentioned GDPR but there's other compliance frameworks 
Uh, and in a summary, a uh, sort of very brief summary, uh, and because it's brief, it might be a bit unfair, but uh, they provide, uh, uh, all these uh, methodologies provide excellent catalogs of assets, threats, and controls. But when they go to cyber, uh, cyber security risk management, they end up, or they are pervaded by risk matrices, which um, uh, I think it was, um, well, in, in one of the, I mean, it was this comment uh, which was made, we should move from using these colors, red, blue, uh, sorry, red, green and, and orange or yellow, whatever the color. Um, I mean, there's, there's uh, space for doing more powerful analysis, especially if we want to um, 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 allocate uh, resources, cybersecurity resources, which are quite, quite scarce. Okay, and the a comment that will that um, will be recurrent is that there is relatively little reference to emergent AI tools and attacks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Though the times are, uh, as the poet used to say, uh, the times they are a changing. Uh, we have, uh, for example, the European Union Artificial Intelligence Act. Uh, which, by the way, is the first. Uh, I, I was very happy because the uh, Tresor uh, Directorate is mentioning, uh, if I understood well, Bayesian, they need to do Bayesian stuff. So I think this is the first law which mentions Bayesian methods in, in, in the law. So the, this is a, a very important um, um, uh, law or act, uh, um, not only for the European Union, but also for everybody who wants to sell things in the European Union. Uh, because it mentions things like uh, what are high risk, uh, high risk uh, artificial intelligence systems, and they talk about the need to undertake uh, proper uh, risk, uh, make secure systems, and they talk about numerous ethical properties which are interesting, which are important. Uh, at the same time, I, and this uh, this is just from I mean the, the sort of first version the first definite version that it will be it, it will evolve the NIST, uh, the U.S. Institute of Standards, uh, has prepared their first risk management framework uh, in artificial intelligence, but it's basically a, a verbose description. It's a, a bunch of words, basically no no no, basically no hints on 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 quantitative approaches, et cetera. And MITRE uh, it's, uh, has pre prepared a terminology on, on attacks on risks in artificial intelligence, which is quite, quite good. And there's a, a review of uh, Ernst uh, Young, uh, a review on a, a number of other uh, uh, attempts to provide risk management frameworks in artificial intelligence. And I put their uh, stylet, which is a, a, a European project that in which uh, we are taking part, which is related to risk management in artificial intelligence, uh, with a focus on on on, on using AI in in, in in at the police uh, at law enforcement agencies. So the things are, the, I mean, it's a good time to to think about these these kind of things. So as I mentioned, in, in this uh, ecosystem, there's uh, uh, many uh, interesting risk uh, models to be considered, decision problems, etc. I mean, as, as I said, over each arrow, you could you could think of an interesting problems, and I've put uh, some of them. Uh, we mentioned actually this morning, I don't know, product design, market segmentation. We we mentioned pricing and dynamic pri pricing, etc. Uh, of those, I will talk, uh, that's the one uh, that is of more interest to us, which is uh, cybersecurity resource allocation. And that, this includes uh, um, uh, selecting a cyber insurance product, because we, we, we think that uh, uh, this is a sort of joint uh, exercise that should be undertake, uh, under, undertaken by, by organizations. <clears throat> so that's that's the one that that everything which is kind of important I'm, I'm putting them in red. Okay, that's a tact it could, could be a tact both a tactical and a strategic problem. And the the idea is uh, the, uh, the the question that we want to answer: What is the best inv investment in cybersecurity controls uh, against uh, cyber threats? And, and this, as I said, in the portfolio should include 
uh, uh, cyber insurance. Um, we saw these kind of pictures. Uh, I'm probably a worse uh, drawer than Olivia, so my, my pictures are, are even worse. But basically, uh, we have this, uh, uh, we, we study this uh, kind of system which have, uh, can be attacked and we have this curve. Actually, the type of, the type of uh, things that we, that this comes from our real uh, case. So there's a probability that uh, the impact will be zero. So there's a positive probability and the rest is, is, is spread like this. And we want to uh, introduce controls uh, be beyond those that uh, we might have so that uh, the curve is, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, the cur curve is more moved to the, to the, to the left. Okay. Basically, that would be the idea. That's a problem. And um, so, so the, the kind of approach that we we could, uh, I mean, that would be sort of a sort of uh, standard uh, risk analysis approach would be w what would be the best cybersecurity policy for? I, I put here uh, my, my institution, the National Research Council, because we were attacked. At the beginning of summer, but I, I could put uh, Sorbonne, right? Because it was attacked as, as well. Maybe it, it's it's been the same people with the same tool, but I'm, I'm not sure. And the costs, I, I don't. I, I'm not sure if this would be this would enter into a catastrophic thing because other. I, I know that other research institutions have been attacked in the same way. Anyway, uh, so uh, a typical approach would be try to somehow uh, gain uh, advantage of the structure uh, of the hardware and software blocks, uh, for close, for, uh, forecast the block security, the system security, design the policies, including insurance, uh, and then try to uh, try to forecast what would be the impact on security and try to find that the optimal security policy. But the sort of very important thing is that uh, what's up with the bad guys attacking. So. We need to be careful, um, or, or we can do um, in, uh, things in a different way to a traditional risk analysis. So, uh, in a, in a, um, as a very basic scheme that I shall uh, try to make a little bit uh, more uh, detailed. Uh, so, we have an organization, the threats. Um, these threats could cause impacts, and we have the cybersecurity portfolio. Uh, to uh, try to mitigate those impacts. First thing is uh, uh, to discuss a little bit of impact. So many of them have appeared. So um, I, I, I wrote uh, impacts beyond CIA. That's confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Impacts, uh, which is a te technical, technical, uh, technical approach. But be, uh, uh, be beyond these technical uh, attributes, uh, we should consider uh, more of business and societal uh, attributes. So I put there a, a, a kind of a generic model that we try, a, a model of uh, objectives that uh, one would like to optimize uh, in when doing cybersecurity. Um, and, and we spend some time on, on, on the literature and of, on, in, various, in various domains. Uh, with the obje objectives and the preference models that should be, uh, or, or, or kind of template, uh, generic uh, 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 preference models that might be uh, interest relevant in cybersecurity. Uh, the the green ones refer to money, right? Um, uh, but there's other important ones uh, which are in blue. Um, I, I don't know. You can kill people uh, through um, cyber attacks. Uh, and you can damage the environment, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that needs to be taken into account and somehow, yeah, taken into account in the, in the models, in some organizations. So we go back to the uh, general scheme and you can make it more, more, um, more detailed, a little bit more detailed. And that's, this is based on, there's various possibilities, but one is suggested by AXA, by the way, by the AXA colleagues. Uh, based on the information security forum recommendations. Uh, so you can detail what's an organization and you can use, you can take into account its profile, its assets, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what threats? Uh, so there's uh, various threats that are uh, distinguished. Uh, we are especially interested in, 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 in targeted uh, threats. 
The impacts, we mentioned that some are insurable and other are non-insurable. Uh, security controls, which can have um, uh, various types, uh, recovery controls and insurance, con uh, insurance uh, contracts within the cybersecurity portfolio and constraints. Uh, there could be legal constraints, economic constraints, uh, technical constraints, uh, compliance, etc., etc., etc. And you can make it uh, even more detailed, uh, just in case somebody asked me, uh, was going to ask uh, me some examples. So I put some examples there for all, all, of, the, all of these little boxes. That, and that, that's the kind of structure that we want to reflect in the models that we try to, to develop. Now, the general strategy that, that we follow is uh, reflected in the next two slides. Uh, and and uh, I, this is a sort of a, a two slide uh, uh, description of what we do in adversarial risk analysis. Uh, so I've reflected there a, a generic uh, risk analysis, uh, cyber risk analysis uh, exercise. Uh, so basically, the organization needs to uh, decide what are the security controls and, and the insurance that they are going to adopt. Uh, the, the squares are like uh, decisions. Uh, attacks uh, are uncertainties that we, we, we suffer. And the consequences, uh, th those attacks that might happen or not, not might happen and that might happen with certain intensity, et cetera, will have a, a, um, an impact over the company utility, the organization utility, right? That's, uh, but what happens is that uh, we gain uh, insight and we make uh, better assessments of the, um, we, we need to do here uh, assess probabilities, uh, for example, with the kind of models that uh, Caroline, Caroline and Olivier mentioned. Uh, if, if we split between uh, between uh, um, between um, um, uh, intentional or targeted attacks, and and when we we leave uh, non-targeted attacks there, the idea is that uh, uh, behind uh, targeted attacks there's guys uh, or, or and, and ladies. Uh, there's, there's there's persons. Uh, who have some interests, uh, they, they, they do, I mean, they could do it for fun and that might be, they derive they some utility from that, uh, but uh, they can get money, they can, I don't know, uh, create uh, political, um, I mean, they, they could destroy our reputation, etc. So there's some intentional guys, uh, guys and ladies, uh, with uh, who, um, who with limited resources try to do as best as, as they can for a purpose. And the idea is that with this, such kind of um, refinement of the structure, we can, well, we, we can think better about the problem and we can get better estimates. Now that's the basic, uh, the uh, reflection of the information security forum structure uh, gets something like this. So they, they propose uh, various types of threats. They propose uh, several types of uh, uh, contra, uh, uh, portfolios, uh, you, you can still see the insurance, uh, uh, etc. And I put on, on, on different gray types of gray, uh, various types of attackers that we could have. Some of them could be uh, nation state sponsored, nation, uh, nation state sponsored, uh, others could be, I don't know, hacktivists, etc. Um, and the idea that, that, that that's a kind of uh, analysis that in, 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 in the beginning we are going to try to do. To proceed in, in, in this case, uh, that's uh, actually the risk analysis that we consider. Uh, now, the, 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 I mean, these are difficult uh, to assess as um, we were illustrated this morning. These are also uh, quite difficult to, uh, to assess because they have uh, some kind of a strategic, strategic nature. So these are the probabilities uh, with which uh, various attackers will attack us, right? And how we think about this, uh, oh, well, that this is just uh, how do we compute these kind of things. But uh, how we think of this is uh, trying to think of, uh, I, I'm, I'm very bad with it, but uh, we put on the, on the boots of the, of the attacker or, or the various attackers and try to think of the kind of problem. Now, um, uh, we, we have the defender to consult, right? It's, it's our client, okay, so we can ask uh, them uh, about the data that we require from them, but we don't have these this, this people, right? 
So what we uh, uh, build uh, on top of this is our, our, uh, our random uh, preference model and random uh, probabilities, right? And based on that, we, we simulate on that problem and based on these simulations, we, we, can, we can come out with the probabilities that we were requiring here. More or less, that's the sort of general idea. Um, okay, so uh, this is a kind of complex, and for uh, for to sort of try to implement this, um, um, and, and for a particular uh, bunch of of uh, organizations that were mentioned with our SMEs, which are kind of uh, quite similar structurally, uh, we try to come out with a um, toolbox with a kind of parametric model that we can tweak. Uh, and provide advice to to the SMEs. So basically, we need to ca come out with uh, come out with uh, a number of of uh, features, uh, the business parameters, uh, some model parameters which are up, up, updated in light of data. Uh, we have templates um, for the type of assets. So the list of assets will be much much longer, right? But uh, I mean to sort of spend just uh, not so much time. We put uh, things like uh, uh, some business info. Uh, I mean, it, it's sort of our generic or uh, our initial version would be something like this. Environmental threats, again, the list is very long, but we just put fire, fl fire flood, et cetera, et cetera. Non-targeted. Uh, and the attackers, uh, the, again, the list would be, could be, but we, we put um, uh, a nation state, competitor, uh, cyber delinquency and hacker organization. The types of, uh, of um, uh, targeted attacks would be DDoS, social engineering, and the impacts of the list, we, we included this, right? Also the controls, uh, we need to, I mean, we try to sort of parameterize everything. So, 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 so uh, I mean, so what are the costs of the controls? What impact uh, do they have uh, or over various types of attacks? And also a, list, a little list of insurance products. So the idea of, of, with this tool, toolbox is um, much as we, it was described this morning. So. There's some interaction with the client, with SME in this case. So they, they would say, uh, they would input input some of these values. And then uh, the models that we are we have built uh, play a little bit and provide the optimal solution or some of the best solutions for this company in terms of what uh, controls, uh, what uh, cyber controls should, in, uh, should they uh, include in their portfolio, including uh, the corresponding cyber insurance products. Okay. So now cybersecurity risk management meets uh, artificial intelligence. So that was the uh, ISF scheme uh, or ISF based scheme. And uh, the blue uh, arrows indicate where um, uh, the, some of the new things that uh, are, uh, AI based methods or AI based elements, ingredients bring into the, to the, to the four. Uh, um, so there are AI assets, there's new classes of uh, attacks, targeted attacks. Uh, some impacts are, are being, some new impacts are being proposed. Uh, there's new controls, there's new recovery controls. Uh, yep, and that's, that's, we need to deal with this. Uh, a couple of examples. So the first one is refers to attacks to content filters, which are backbone of the society, uh, one of the backbones of this society, uh, internet society. So basically, we want uh, we use this to avoid spam, to I don't know, avoid a various type of illegal accesses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I put here uh, uh, for uh, for uh, tools to stop spam. Uh, with uh, on the left uh, on the left column with the numbers is the accuracy um, uh, the accuracy with uh, clean data I mean the data that um, I mean is the normal flow of data and on the right hand uh, column there is um, uh, uh, results with uh, um, um, attack data this means that uh, somebody so we have data uh, uh, we have uh, uh, um, messages which are spam and messages which are harm. So 
we slightly craft the ham the spam messages to to fool the filter the spam filter and you can see that uh, with a with a very simple attack and you can see that uh, the performance decreases uh, decreases um, importantly and what is important also so this gives basically uh, um, uh, further opportunities to the bad bad guys and and, and girl and ladies uh, undertaking the the good thing is that we can actually robustify. Um, so, so I mean that that would be sort of the base our basic anti-spam, but we can actually robustify with the with some some methods. Uh, robustification is not perfect, okay, but we we perform a little bit better. So we are if we are aware of that we can we are such susceptible of being attacked, and we defend ourselves, we can do reasonably we can do much better. Um, another example, um, attacks to image recognition systems, and that's, again, in security. One exa possible example would be security. So Olivier comes to, in the morning to the, to the university, and it goes through some camera. The camera recognizes Olivier, and he can enter into the office, or in the building and in the office. Uh, but uh, this uh, Olivier could be a bad, guy, a bad guy and change slightly his appearance or something, or somebody could pretend, right? Uh, so, um, so there's attacks to image data. This is a, a, a sort of simplified example. Uh, basically, uh, the object is the objective is to recognize handwritten numbers. That was that's a commodity uh, at the moment with convolutional neural networks. But if you attack slightly and you can appreciate that there's some gray pixels or some gray, uh, if, if you attack purpose, purposefully those images, you can see that the, the accuracy gets uh, decreased uh, quite a lot. So, and this, uh, the idea is that we can fool those systems and maybe perpetrate more delinquent, delictive uh, uh, acts. For uh, attacks to assets, uh, you could think of Uber, uh, and with autonomy in like um, 15, 20 years or 10 years, uh, Uber with uh, autonomous driving, uh, uh, um, autonomous cars, autonomous vehicles, uh, autonom autonomous taxis in their in their in the case. And so the idea would be that uh, uh, for a car uh, viewing this, it's recognizing people, persons. Therefore, it stops. But if you perturbate, you, you pro pro from your uh, this is this is the same image slightly perturbated. Uh, purposefully perturbated, the people uh, evaporate uh, from the recognition system, and the car would uh, would speed where, where it should break and probably killing. So that's a kind of nirvana for uh, Al Qaeda, for example. <clears throat> okay, and the good things is that we can actually, uh, if we are aware of this, we can actually protect or robustify. Uh, uh, um, our methods, uh, uh, sorry, the, those uh, recognition systems. So again, the, 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 this is the accuracy. So you want to be higher in these curves, right? So this is, if you don't protect with a sort of standard re recognition system, uh, this is the standard defense that is currently in force, which is adversarial training. And with the ARA, uh, you, you can do uh, um, slightly better, right? Of course, it's not perfect because, I mean, if they attack you with, uh, the, the, this is basically the intensity of the attack. Uh, so if they attack you in a very intensive manner, uh, I mean, your performance degrades, uh, but we do better than, than if you don't protect your, yourself. Okay, that's, that, that's with um, um, a recognition of, uh, is the kind of problem that we, we mentioned. Re recognition, some images. Um, and it also um, uh, affects impacts. For example, this uh, NIST uh, framework that I mentioned before, it's proposing a number of AI risks or AI impacts. Uh, uh, some of them refer to reliability, others to privacy, et cetera, fairness. And the thing, uh, the, uh, one thing that, uh, I mean, this is kind of, kind, of, kind of very recent, how do we integrate, overlap, expand, our cybersecurity cyber objectives with these new impacts or these new new objectives proposed by uh, this organization. 
Okay, so that's the, the picture that uh, we want to deal with, right? So it was this, our cybersecurity risk management, but now being aware that there's new things going on, uh, the blue things, uh, at least concerning uh, uh, artificial intelligent ingredients. Uh, now the thing, the, the approach that I mentioned before, it was a little bit, uh, was a little bit uh, uh, black box, right? So an organization is picture is depicted as um, is a box. It was a box. So uh, to make it uh, nice, uh, uh, more detail to take uh, I mean to take into account uh, more these these uh, details, we need to go. We, we need we need to take advantage of this structure, or we need to give some structure of uh, to the system. So we we cannot uh, use AXA as a box, right? But we need to take into account the structure of uh, uh, AXA uh, information system uh, structure. And there's various uh, approaches. Um, um, one is one of them which is quite uh, useful and it's kind of, it's kind of the things that uh, were discussed this morning is the, there's, there's, there's the, the uh, Purdue, Enterprise, uh, uh, Purdue Enterprise Architect Reference Model, which basically considers uh, several levels of, of blocks. Each of these could be a hardware or a, or a software asset. Uh, links uh, means, uh, so there's a kind of hierarchy. Uh, the, the, the links means that there is a communication. So if this is attacked, there could be a chance that this is, receives an attack, etc. And basically, uh, uh, um, so attacks could come and uh, attack uh, at this first level, but it could come through this uh, second level tire, etc. Blah blah blah. Okay. Um, some organizations have uh, more than one facility, so th that would be like a facility, right? So they could have. I, I just put two two facilities, but there could be three, four, and we discussed this morning on on on. Um, uh, I think it was called the portfolio of customers of, of an insurance company. So, you, I mean, a, a company, a client could be this, but you could think of a, a higher level to if you want to consider the whole portfolio. And the thing is that uh, uh, you can actually consider targeted and non-targeted. Um, a non-targeted basically would mean that with uh, some probability an attack is, is affecting all the entry, entry points. So B1, B2, and B3 in this case. And targeted uh, means that uh, with, uh, uh, with some probability, it's going to be one. With some probability, it's going to be two. And, and with some probability, it's going to be three. And you can play with mixtures of this uh, to handle. Uh, you, you could think of immediately, well, I, I could be targeting two of these. But then if you start thinking of, of this play, of this kind of, of games, then the number of parameters is huge. So we are basically considering only targeted to one uh, one of the boxes, one of the boxes, or uh, with some probability to, to all, the rest of the probability to all the boxes, right? So uh, with this structure, uh, with this structure, we can uh, actually ca uh, use the same kind of uh, approach. So we need uh, a simulation uh, to propagate uh, a given attack through this over a certain time until it's detected, right? Um, so basically this uh, will tell us which of these elements, this simulation will tell us which of these elements are get infected, right? Once with this, uh, we uh, find out, we simulate what are the impacts, right? Right. So we get uh, something like this. Uh, we get something like this uh, when we inject uh, impact, uh, sorry, attacks of uh, various of various types, right? And finally, we need a scheme to choose. Uh, to choose, we need a, some kind of simulation scheme to choose uh, the portfolio that we are considering. So, uh, basically, we have a current solution. Uh, we find out if uh, if if we update it. Uh, if we update it, we find out if it's uh, uh, infeasible, and if not then we need to some kind of uh, optimization approach, optimization simulation approach to try to come out, uh, basically to put this, uh, this bar in zero as high as possible and to make this as, 
to the left as possible in terms of expected utilities. So that's the kind of, <clears throat> that's the kind of uh, a scheme that we are uh, exploring for um, um, cyber risk management when we take into account the structure, the detailed structure or, or so, a somewhat more detailed structure of the uh, um, uh, architecture of, a, of an organization, um, including uh, the, element, the AI elements that I mentioned before. So there's, uh, in this, uh, we are starting in, in this project with this, but uh, there is uh, numerous relevant issues, uh, modeling impacts and likelihoods, uh, for example, with the kind of models that uh, uh, Caroline and Olivia mentioned this morning. Uh, this is very intensive computationally. Uh, so these are very large scale simulations, uh, detailed simulations that uh, that we we have some ideas on how to do it. Um, to make this available to, to the world, uh, to make it useful, we need software implementation. And there's uh, the number of issues that are, uh, are related. For example, accumulation in this case can be studied, uh, uh, can be studied using this kind of uh, idea on, the, on one, one um, level up in the hierarchy, right? So that's... Uh, that's um, this can be and, and then um, of of this uh, this can, can can be used to uh, uh, design products uh, and plus the other problems that I mentioned and uh, and others that I did not mention. So there's plenty of interesting things that can be done in this space. And uh, thank you, oh merci. Uh, so just. Uh, um, the sponsors uh, through these three European projects, uh, products, uh, the European Office of Aerospace Research, and of course, uh, and most importantly, the EXA Research Fund. And um, we, as you, you, you could see that uh, there were lots of people in the first slide, and we are always super happy to, to collaborate in this area of risk management. Thank you. Thanks a lot, David, to have time for, thank you for the perfect timing and to have time for a few questions, if there's questions in the audience. Oh. Thank you, David. So, so first, I, I have, uh, in fact, two questions that are not related with each other, but the first one is on your general uh, framework when you mention the utility and uh, uh, the transfers from, for example, there is a, a transfer from the security protocols towards cyber insurance. Um, and I was wondering uh, first, uh, is it always possible to properly define what you transfer? What you transfer? Because um, uh, usually uh, insurance is sometimes used to cover what was not covered, in fact, by cyber, cyber security protocols. And uh, still with this question, but uh, with another issue, probably it's taken into account in the utility function. But the there is, that? in the utility uh, function, uh, you have uh, also an uncertainty from the perspective of the policyholder oh. about an uncertainty, sorry for my, my terrible uh, accent. It's uncertain. Uh, how cyber insurance will be or able to cover some uh, claims. Because sometimes you may, uh, for example, uh, have a loss that uh, goes far beyond uh, the uh, limit of the policies. And so I, I suppose that's in the utility functions that you can make the trick to, um, to take that into account. Yeah. So um, um, the first one. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, this, as I, I, I cannot say that this is a sort of easy, easiest problem. I mean, your problems are, are more difficult. In this, in this problem uh, that I described, the insurance products are given. So this means that uh, um, 
what is covered and what is not covered is is defined already. So this is just about making a, some kind of financial computation, right? Um, um, the problem that you mentioned uh, is more on the, let's say, the product design. So we have some little models, but we haven't played uh, with uh, realistic examples. But uh, uh, we have some some problem, uh, some models to to. We haven't had uh, time to to experiment with the realistic examples that, that would address the, this thing of defining or designing the product. Uh, the second question, could you... Could you uh, uh, it, it was about uh, the fact that uh, when you uh, purchase cyber insurance, you're not necessarily sure uh, how good it will cover your uh, losses because sometimes you may have uh, losses that are much more uh, important uh, and this is typically defined again. I mean, it's the, it's the same yes. answer. Um, yes. We are using a defined product, uh, and uh, is we just make the financial calculations. If if uh, if you go be beyond what you, the maximum that is covered, then that's uh, in, that's included in the mm -hmm. cost that you uh, that you need to consider. Okay. The same, I mean, in the sort of balance of the cost, we you need to include that uh, the. Uh, cybersecurity controls that you implement. Uh, I mean, you, you have to pay some money for the insurance, of course, uh, but you have to pay to put the firewall and you have to put, uh, you have to pay to, to hire like 10 people, uh, 10 uh, security engineers, etc., etc. So this is part of the, of the equation of the, of the optimization problem. Okay. And I have another question which is related to you, the, the image with the, the people on the street. Uh, and uh, if, I, if I understand correctly, uh, so in the second line, you have uh, some image with, which is faked, uh, which is attacked, uh, and then you detect that it is attacked, uh, but how do you detect that there are people on the streets? How do you, do you correct? This, this no? is, um, um, I mean, this is almost a commodity at the moment. Okay. Uh, you use uh, conv uh, convolutional neural networks, mm. And you identify um, objects in the street. Uh, if you are very fine and very, then you identify that these are uh, uh, persons. Uh, this is, uh, I would say, this is a commodity at the moment already. Uh, and what this does is that uh, these algorithms, uh, based on these type of networks are susceptible of, of uh, these uh, very subtle uh, attacks uh, which can create uh, problems. There's, there's many other attacks, for example, um, I don't know, just putting uh, some kind of, uh, I, I did this with my youngest daughter, uh, just putting um, a little sticker, a little uh, thing on, on the plate of our car changes completely the the, the the, the, the plates when we go to the supermarket, for example, and that's that's kind of fun, right? It, things that uh, you put a sticker and uh, a stop uh, sign becomes a yield sign. I mean, there's, there's lots of things like this. Okay, thank you. Hi, th thank you. I have two questions, like Olivier. Um, first one is, how do you uh, choose or calibrate the utility function on the attacker side? Yeah, if there is one. And the second question is, how do you set up or choose the cost of the security controls? You mentioned that you have to pay for the firewall, etc., but it's a common issue that we have that there is a lack of data about this. Yeah, so the cost, uh, uh, the cost is, uh, I mean, it's a catalog. You know that a firewall of, uh, um, I don't know, uh, Cisco uh, costs, uh, with these character features, costs, uh, I don't know, 30,000 euros or something like this. It's, it's just a catalog, okay? Uh, for the, um, we assume, uh, we tend to assume, uh, for, for the other part, uh, we tend to assume a risk-prone uh, uh, risk utility, right? 
and we put uh, we put um, um, a uniform distribution. That's that's a, the kind of approach that we tend to. We we put a, a uniform distribution over the risk proneness um, uh, risk proneness um, um, parameter of the of the attacker. Of course, this is uh, this is subject to sensitivity analysis. So we perform check-ins, etc., to see if the conclusions are, are robust. And and we could use I don't know we we could have a spice etc. that uh, in the organization uh, that could I mean we we try to use all the information that we can, but we have to uh, take into account the uncertainty that we have over the parameters of the of the attacker. Maybe a related question: Is it possible in your model to add uh, a control, a dynamic control of the hacker? That is, the uh, hacker will adapt his strategy regarding to the response to the control of uh, the, the company to have a kind of loop like in uh, game theory, for yeah. example. Well, the, this would be like uh, more operational tools, right? So there's, there's, uh, I mean, within the controls, within the, contr within the list of controls. Like, like there, right? So you could put these kind of you, you could put these kind of tools. So uh, the guy from Balance Scorecard or Security Scorecard, what is? Yeah. So that would be that could be used as a monitoring moni monitoring monitoring tool as well, right? Uh, and by the way, that that's interesting because this allows you to, for example, establish. Uh, like uh, some kind of service level agreement. Uh, so if you compromise, if you, if you, if you put your, if you maintain your risk, cyber risk level beyond a certain value, then you will pay a little bit less, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But that would go, I, I would say that that, that would go in the, in the yeah. So thanks a lot, so David. I, I mean, this is a, uh, we mentioned before, uh, I, I really, it, it, I believe it was, he, he, he was a, so this kind of thing is uh, the, the typical exercise that we do every year to, for, for tactical and strategic. That would be more operational. So sorry, we are a little off. So just one short question. And uh, after we switch to the other talks. Well, I, I feel like a rock star with this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I really don't see it. Yes, uh, does it work? Does your system work? Have you tested if it works or not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have tested. Uh, by the way, if somebody, uh, if, if somebody uh, wants to go ahead with this. So we can hack you? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the the uh, numerical, numerical uh, stomach. The, the the numerical stomach is uh, open source, and you just need to make uh, an interface on a uh, yeah to, to to capture the thing. But it, it would I, I, as I mentioned, um, this goes for SMEs because if you go to I don't know, if you if you go to I don't know WebSolo or or, or or this is a completely different world. It's much more complicated as as the Android writer <laughs> would tell you. Uh, you, men you mentioned uh, the, the robustness with respect to parameters, but do you have studied the robustness with the model, with respect to uh, the model that you choose? Do you, do you study this question or...? Um, because, yeah. Uh, we... Um, now we basically do um, a robustness uh, on the par on the parameters that we introduce. Yeah, but we could uh, yeah we could try. Yeah. We thank uh, David for the talk and for the response to the uh, questions. Uh -huh.